this is a YouTuber. He was a prankster. He's been missing for two years. My heart ain't all my heart was cut out to me. Whatever Eric is saying is not true at all. He finally decided to respond to the accusations. Magic Hat just kept helping this same homeless guy. I was never allowed to draw withdraw money out of that account. Rahat didn't steal that money. I don't do drama at all. I entertain people. Eight months ago, I uploaded a documentary called The YouTube Magician That Vanished what happened to the magic of Rahat. That documentary would turn out to be the single most important piece of content I've ever made. It would inadvertently end up leading to the return of a legendary YouTuber who'd been labeled as guilty for a crime that he didn't commit despite having never put forward his side of the story. So this video will be slightly different to the usual as I'll be talking to Rahat about how things are going after his YouTube comeback and I'll also discuss why it could only be a matter of time until we see a tragedy on the site due to false accusations being levelled against a creator. Rahat, thanks so much for joining me today. It's, uh, it's great to see you. And obviously, you're back on YouTube now, which is, which is great to see. So I really wanted to find out a bit more for the fans about how you're doing and perhaps a little bit more of an insight beyond what we saw in the comeback video. So how is life after your YouTube comeback and, and what's been going on with you? After uh, coming back to YouTube, life has been, uh, life has been good. You know, um, I feel like I'm in a better um, uh, mental state. Um, you know, I've been working on, working on myself, you know, trying to, trying to get back on track. Um, you know, I've been off the platform for, for quite a while now. So, you know, uh, I've been trying to look at what's like in trend right now, like who's, um, who's a popular, you know, YouTuber out there and everything and see what they're doing, um, successfully. And, um, you know, I'm trying to, uh, cause you know, a lot of that momentum for me has, um, you know, stopped and I'm trying to figure out a way to, uh, get, get back on that train. So you know, it's a lot of uh, uh, rebuilding at the moment. Well, you certainly came back with a bang, that's for sure. The first prank video you posted for uh, close to two and a half years hit nearly four million views, which is quite incredible. I also saw on some of your socials, you posted a few pictures of targets you wanted to hit by way of subscribers. So what's kind of the goals now for you with YouTube and the future of the channel? It's funny because um, when, when I first started YouTube, um, I had a goal of, always hitting a million and um that, that was kind of my end and goal like okay i'm gonna hit a million and that's it you know but but for me you know i've accomplished a lot you know within my uh, youtube career and you know coming back i was kind of thinking like okay what what is what else is there left to accomplish you know i've really done i've done a lot you know what else is there left to do and I thought, you know, um, right now I just uh, broke over seven million subscribers. And I thought, well, why not? Why not go for ten million? See what happens, you know? Like collect the diamond button. I think diamond button's the next button. You know, I've actually the gold one sitting right behind me. And I thought, okay, let me add it to the collection. It's you know, goal to work towards. But at the same time, you know, coming back to the platform, I want to come back and you know entertain people, make people happy, make people laugh. Like I, that's, that's what I've always wanted to do with the YouTube channel. So, um, that, that, that's my main focus is, uh, providing good entertaining quality, uh, content. So it's great to see Rahat back on YouTube and doing well after a very difficult few years. And while Rahat's back, Eric, his accuser has now gone. His channel, Etube, has been renamed Raz Entertainment and has been taken over by Eric's cameraman, Raz. This perhaps shows that Eric was never in control of the channel in the first place. After a hat's video came out and showed that Eric was lying, Raz uploaded a video claiming that Eric had also lied to him and in the description slightly mocked the whole situation. He claimed Rahat's story didn't make any sense and that there must be more to it despite Rahat showing the evidence of the money being handed over to Eric. After I made the video, um, I mentioned that I was going to deliver two letters, uh, one to Roz, one to Eric. And uh, for, for me, Eric, um, I actually wanted to 
go to his uh, motel. And the idea was, you know, I wasn't going to meet him face to face. I had no desire of meeting him face to face. Um, I just wanted to uh, deliver the letter and just be done with it. Um, so it was, I want to say it was around like 10 o'clock at night. Um, I went over to his uh, motel and I noticed the lights were on and his door was, it, it seemed like it was closed and he was like on the um, second story. And I uh, said, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to walk up. And I actually had the envelope um, with like tape on it. So my idea was I was just going to go, I was just going to go up to the door uh, just tape it onto the door and just walk away. And I was actually going to knock, you know, play ding dong ditch or something like not, not really, but um, just, just uh, plant the letter and just walk away. My idea was, you know, he's going to open up the door and see the letter, you know, the next morning. Um, that didn't happen. So uh, going up, yeah, it was such a surreal moment. It actually felt like a movie. It was so weird. So I uh, walked up the stairs and as soon as you walk up the stairs, you actually see his room and uh, the room itself has like this huge window and it was actually wide open. Um, and when I walked up the stairs, I, I turned that corner and I'm looking at him one on one through through the window. I'm like, oh, shoot, this was not part of the plan at, at all. Um, so I said, you know, screw it, whatever. I'm just going to put the letter and just uh, be, be done with it, you know? So, uh, unfortunately the door was actually, uh, slightly opened. So <laughs> what had happened was, um, he saw me, he got concerned. And the thing was, I had a mask on and everything I actually had, you know, um, uh, uh, something over my head as well. So he, I don't think he really recognized me at all. I ended up planting the letter onto the door and unfortunately the door opened and, he was just there. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't really say anything. I just planted the letter um, and I, I walked away and he uh, was actually yelling, um, you know, who, who are you? You know, who are you? And um, I was just walking back to my car and he just kept yelling, like, who are you? And I just said, read the letter. And that's the last time I ever, you know, talked to him or had any uh, interaction with him. But, um, you know, when that was happening, it, it was very odd. Like my heart was pounding at first, but as soon as I stuck the letter onto the door, I was super calm. I was so calm, like nothing could, nothing can face me, you know? If he came after me, so be it. What is he gonna do? You know, attack me? Okay, you know, and like I've been through pain already, you know, what's, what's the worst that can happen? Um, you know, it, I shouldn't have done it that late at night, but, um, you know, I was kind of sitting there in my car thinking like, wow, I didn't expect that to happen, but I'm sure everything happens for a reason. So for the last part of the video, I want to look briefly at YouTube's history with false accusations and discuss the possibility of it ending up in a tragedy. On one hand, it's easy to write off YouTube drama as stupid and petty, and a lot of the time it usually is, but at the same time, what seems like petty drama to the unknowing audience can be absolutely life-destroying for the person being targeted. While Rahat is a key example of this, having been on the end of career-threatening false accusations, it's sad to say he's not the only one. YouTube has a history of false allegations where rampant social media mobs jump on the very first thing they hear and they take that as evidence of guilt before hearing the full story. Slazo, the Australian YouTuber, as many of you will know, was the subject of abuse allegations from a former girlfriend in 2019. He quickly received public backlash from the commentary community before he even had the chance to put forward his side of the story. One of his main accusers, commentary YouTuber I'm Alex, has a history of jumping to conclusions on YouTube and pointing the guilty finger at other creators before the full story is even known. As a result of the allegations, Slazo's reputation was battered and many were falsely led to believe that he was a rapist, something that he would debunk not long after the accusations came out. The impact that these false claims had on Slazo's life led to him stepping away from YouTube and having to seek counselling for his mental health. 
More recently, John Swan, a commentary YouTuber, was at the center of several controversies, but one in particular with a 15-year-old Australian commentary YouTuber named Pie Man. Pie Man had revealed that he was flirting with a girl a couple of years younger than him, and as a result, John Swan had insinuated that Pie Man was a paedophile and publicly called him out for it on Twitter. He told Pie Man that he should leave the internet and that he needed therapy. Now, at 15 years old, Pie Man himself is a minor, but unfortunately, he ended up getting ridiculed online. The result was that Pie Man posted on Twitter that he was going to take his own life. The outcome thankfully didn't end this way, but John Swan wouldn't show much remorse for the impact he'd had on Pie Man's life and would go on to say that he was suicide baiting. Leveling serious accusations like the examples I showed just now are becoming far more frequent on YouTube and creators are happy to throw around these false claims without any thought for what they may do to the person that they're accusing. Clout, drama, views and clicks, all of these things seem to be deemed far more important than worrying about ruining someone's career and potentially their whole life. In so many of these cases, we see the creators that are subject of false accusations often talk about how they're considering suicide. The way I dealt with, uh, you know, the, the situation, um, you know, mentally, um, you know, when the, the very first video came out back in 2018 of uh, Eric in front of the camera, um, you know, telling, telling his uh, story and everything, I remember sitting there in bed thinking that's that's it you know i i knew that at this point my uh youtube career was was over you know there's no way to come back from this at all it it was really starting to weigh on me um as as the days went on uh months went on like you know i just constantly thought about it you know it was just there in the back of my mind you know every single time i try to talk to someone or try to have fun it's just there in the back of my mind thinking um man, there is a portion of people out there that hates me, you know, and they are running off of this lie that that um, he's he's telling people. My mental health was getting to a point where I, I wasn't really happy with it. And um, especially creating all the content, doing all the videos for brands and everything. It was it was a lot. I didn't really know how to deal with it at all. There, I, I couldn't figure out what I can do. And honestly, the the thing I did once um, the video went viral on you know Reddit and all these other sites, I thought, you know what? I think the best way for me to handle this is to simply just get off the internet, you know? Um, I thought, you know what? I've done everything that I wanted to with YouTube. Um, and I think it's just time for me to start a new chapter. And that's actually where, um, real estate, you know, came in for me. I ended up, uh, going into real estate, uh, full time. And that's sort of the way I like handled it. You know, I coped with it, you know, thinking, okay, um, I'm going to go into this new venture and see how I, I can do in it. And I, I did, uh, great in it, you know, and, uh, my real estate story can be another, story on it on its own for a different day um that that's also like a movie in itself um but after i got into real estate um i was happy again and i thought you know um screw what everyone is saying about me you know i already know like I, um i know what's real and um you know i i don't need people telling me that i'm a, I'm a bad person just because this person um uh, is, is telling a false story. So for me, um, the way I dealt with it was I, I just I just turned to something different and, and real estate was that. It definitely feels now as if there's uh, a lot more cases of YouTubers certainly suffering with mental health problems. And I mean, it, it brings up a question, something I've always wondered if there's now really a solid argument that YouTube uh, could or, or should start providing a service uh, that helps to support the mental health of its creators. Is that something that you feel at the time you could have used or perhaps seen value in? Oh, absolutely. 100%. I think there should be some sort of uh, mental health like program, you know, for, for YouTubers and just like influencers in general. 
um, you know, what we do is, it's not easy. You know, people come up here and think, oh, we have the easiest jobs in the world. That's not really the case. You know, we do have to deal with a lot of different, um, a lot of different things, you know, people constantly, um, you know, making fake stories about you, you know, and um, telling you that, you know, you're, you're a horrible person, you're bad, your content sucks. Um, I'm going to find you, I'm going to stalk, I'm going to kill you. Like, it's tough, you know, um, trying to take all that in. And sooner or later, it does affect your mental health, you know, and um, you know, back, back then I wish there was, you know, a place where I could have turned to and, um, you know, get, get help. And, you know, back, back then I didn't really understand mental health at all. You know, I didn't really understand depression. Um, I, I, I didn't even understand because back then I was going through depression, but I didn't really understand that that's what I was going through. But it would have been nice to um, talk to someone, you know, especially uh, people that I can relate to, you know, YouTubers um, about things that I was going through, you know, talk to them as well. Some sort of like a support uh, group that would have been nice. But I, I hope that in the future there is programs like this for for uh, content creators, influencers and um, people just, you know, that make a living on on uh, the the internet. So Rahat's insight into this topic is absolutely vital, given everything that he's been through. Now it makes me realise that this is a genuine topic worth discussing because if these more serious false allegations are to continue on YouTube, and we're seeing creators loosely and happily throwing around these life ruining terms at others, and let's say the person on the end of that claim isn't mentally equipped to deal with these sorts of allegations, then we may end up seeing a creator taking their own life simply because someone wanted to boost their views or to get into the algorithm. Now you might be thinking you're being a bit dramatic here, but I genuinely, I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility. We've seen it outside of YouTube. So it's worth discussing because there are a lot of creators out there who are constantly looking for controversial topics and drama. And these are the sorts of people that need to be very careful because they could be walking down a very, very dangerous road. So this whole unchecked culture that we have on YouTube of creators being considered guilty until proven innocent the second there's any type of allegation against them could one day end up leading down a very, very dark path.